Hi, I'm Shannon Valor, and I'm here to talk about embedded data ethics. So let's start with understanding what the ethics is in data ethics. Ethics is both universal in the sense that ethics is always needed in every society, and plural in the sense that we can't reduce ethical frames of understanding to a single way of seeing the world. And that's a feature, not a bug. Ethics is about learning ways of living well together that enable relationships of trust and the basic conditions of human flourishing. There will always be multiple ways to do this. Clearly, in the context of data, there's more than one way to use data well, but there are also ways of using data that objectively damage social trust and well-being, and these are the ones that data ethics helps us to avoid. So ethical knowledge of how to work well with data draws from many different sources, ethical theory, ethical principles, professional codes of ethics, community knowledge, and individual lived experiences of data practitioners and data subjects. But none of this knowledge has any actual use in the data ecosystem unless it's embedded in regular and skillful practices. Practices are not tasks. Tasks can be completed or checked off a list. Practices are habitual and ongoing. They are never finished. Ethics is a practice. It's not a task. Think about learning to be an excellent parent or a truly good friend. Are those somehow tasks that can be finished? Are they ever ethical journeys that come to an end where we have nothing more to learn or do? No. Obviously, ethics is the art of living and working well, and it requires lifelong moral learning and growth. But you don't get this from a book. You get it from embedding ethical learning into what you do in daily life and feeding those experiences back into your ethical understanding. This is equally true of ethical data practices. Ethical data practice is an ongoing daily investment in learning how to work responsibly and well with data. Leaders in responsible innovation with data need to ask whether ethics is perceived in their own organization in this way, or whether it's been captured by a compliance mindset that seeks to offload or truncate ethical practice into a tick box exercise. To avoid this, leaders need to communicate that ethical data practice is an essential, expected, and rewarded component of organizational and technical excellence not an external demand separated from the core team or organization's mission and goals. Leaders also need to focus on clear, consistent, openly supported, and adequately resourced implementation of this expectation in existing team operations and processes. Don't make data ethics an unfunded mandate where people are expected to live up to ethical principles and solve ethical problems with your data on their own without organizational guidance or support. That's a recipe for employee frustration and for costly high visibility ethical failures. So what are some of the ways that ethical practice can be successfully embedded in an organization? The first step is to help teams learn to recognize how and where ethical risks and opportunities with data arise across the data life cycle, from the way we first conceive of a business or scientific problem to the understanding and handling of the data that we seek out to inform a solution, to the production, evaluation, and deployment of that solution. If teams don't know where to look for ethical risks and opportunities and how to recognize them, they can't live up to any of the ethical principles and standards that your organization has committed to. And this is a skill that has to be built in teams. It doesn't come from having noble intentions or abstract commitments to social responsibility, no matter how genuine. This also isn't a skill that can be offloaded to an ethics advisory board or a chief ethics officer. These are complementary roles that can ensure your organization has the right kind of ethical culture, accountability structures, and direction of travel. 
but they will not have the project level and domain knowledge to allow your organization to pick up on particular ethical hazards or opportunities. The teams closest to the data and the models that you're building from that data must be empowered to identify those ethical hazards and ethical opportunities early when they can be addressed before the hazards pose a risk to society and to your organization and before the opportunities are missed. Ethical issues can occur across the data life cycle from the context understanding where your business or organizational problem first is framed to the data understanding and data preparation stages that you use to bring data to that challenge, to the way that modeling of the data and evaluation of your data model takes place, to when that model is deployed in the real world and tested and audited. At every stage, problems like privacy, unfair data bias, data drift, and inappropriate model choice can cause harms to stakeholders, to users, to the subjects working with your tools. So one common practice then, it begins with bringing a multidisciplinary team together weekly to review an individual data-driven product, proposal, or initiative, and then tasking the team with identifying and classifying its ethical risks, starting with the most common concerns, such as privacy, unfair bias, dirty or inappropriate data sources, opaque or uninterpretable data outputs, unexpected or undesirable system behaviors, or third-party acquisition of the data for new and unexpected purposes. A second stage of practice involves proposing, refining, and evaluating possible interventions and mitigations for the most significant and likely ethical risks. Other, more focused practices can involve embedding red teaming exercises designed to expose project or system vulnerabilities from an adversarial perspective, or participatory practices designed to surface external stakeholder knowledge and concerns at critical design and evaluation stages. A helpful organizing scheme for designing such practices and prioritizing their implementation is to consider eight essential data ethics skills that professionals will have and ask where these skills are already being developed and practiced by your teams. If the answer to any of them is currently nowhere, then that's an opportunity for a new data practice to be developed and supported. Here are the eight skills to look for. First, critical and reflexive data skills are key. This means the ability to ask unasked questions, to identify unstated assumptions in your data practices that may have ethical implications. The second skill is value translation the ability to negotiate diverse and sometimes conflicting stakeholder framings of essential values and definitions of terms like fairness, safety, or harm. The third skill is risk scanning or ethical foresight, the ability to identify foreseeable moral hazards and harms in data practices and products, for example, including dual use potential for things that were not anticipated or planned the fourth is active harm prevention or mitigation, finding design, development, deployment, and policy choices that will reduce or prevent associated data harms. The fifth skill is ethical reasoning about data practice, the ability to reach morally justifiable decisions in data practice with others and to negotiate disagreements about which sorts of reasoning are justified. The sixth is to identify and manage value tensions determining when values or stakeholder interests are conflicting and resolving difficult moral trade-offs and what we call wicked moral problems, where there's no way to actually deliver all of the ethical values that in an ideal world you would be able to satisfy. The seventh is the ability to close accountability gaps, assigning responsibility for system actions and outcomes, including unintended social harms. And finally, the eighth essential skill is moral imagination, the ability to envision more just and sustainable futures with data than our present data practices permit, and to be able to build new practices that can achieve those higher goals. We can think about these practices and skills being embedded in a workflow that begins 
with designing for values like privacy, justice, security, and safety from the ground up. And as part of that, we want to emphasize the importance of getting diverse stakeholder input and participation, following the mantra, nothing about us without us. If you're building a tool or a model to benefit a particular demographic or group or population, you should make sure that you have the perspectives and the deep knowledge of those individuals and groups factoring into your design process. You also want to be able to ensure that the workflow includes moral hazard analysis, which we've already spoken of. The ability to do things like red teaming and ethical threat modeling, including modeling for downstream risks and threats to society and to institutions and individuals. Another step in the workflow is establishing clear chains of accountability and having a failure and disaster response plan that's associated with those accountable roles. Even under the best conditions, ethical risks can emerge in unexpected ways and at unexpected times, and having a plan for how you'll manage those when they arise is vital. Finally, emphasize with your teams the importance of keeping the human lives behind the data at the center of your focus at all times. And that is a critical way of making sure that the ethical values at stake in your practices don't disappear from your organization's vision and priorities. Some closing thoughts. Data ethics is a practice. It's not a state of mind. Good intent without consistent, effective, repeatable, and accountable practices is of little or no value. Never rely on broad ethical principles that are not embedded in careful, rigorous, and repeated ethical practices. Secondly, data ethics requires a combination of technical and social expertise, as well as domain knowledge. This is why it almost always requires a team. Beware also of techno-solutionism. What we call techno-fixes are rarely sufficient in data ethics, yet often they're the only remedy pursued, often at the expense of more robust approaches. I'm gonna close with some shared features of embedded data ethics. Embedded data ethics is participatory and inclusive. Remember that mantra of nothing about us without us. It's repetitive and normalized. It's just part of doing the job with data well. It involves shared rather than diffused responsibility. Data ethics is a team sport, so everyone needs to know their own and others' roles and take ownership of the shared goal. It's reflective, critical, and iterative. It involves asking questions like what worked, what didn't, what did we miss, and how can we do better? It's ambitious, but clear-eyed. You want to dodge optimism bias and what we might call data hopium and have realistic, but ambitious and achievable goals. It's pragmatic, but failure intolerant. Don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, but hey, we tried, or hey, we meant well, doesn't cut it if the harms were foreseeable and avoidable. And it's properly incentivized. Don't make people on your teams be moral martyrs. Make sure that they're rewarded for doing the right thing. That's all I have for today. Thanks very much. I hope this has been helpful and good luck with data ethics embedded in practice.